Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. And today we're unboxing, setting up and taking a closer look at the brand new Apple HomePod Mini. Now I've got two of these here, both in the new blue colour which launches today. But there's also the orange, yellow, space grey and white to choose from. But these give a nice hint of colour without being too in your face. Okay, let's get this opened up and see what we get. And here it is, this is the new blue HomePod Mini. And this looks well nice, yep I'm really pleased I went for this colour. Then under that there's the setup instructions with an Apple sticker and finally the plug. And it's a 20 watt brick which is also USB-C. Okay so taking a closer look at this awesome little speaker. Now this is actually my first HomePod speaker that I've ever owned as I usually have Google speakers around the house. But this looks so nice. I did assume the exterior was going to be hard like a, like a hard plastic but it's not. It's actually a very soft fabric. And as you can see it's got a kind of a mesh design to it. Now the reason for this design is it means it doesn't actually interfere with the sound of the speaker and it also means it can provide a 360 degree sound. Around the back there's the braided USB-C cable. Now this is permanently attached so you cannot remove it. But I like the thickness of this cable. It's actually very similar to the new MacBook cables that we get. The bottom is also colour coded as well and that's showing a little Apple logo. Now this is a nice rubbery texture giving it some decent grip when it's on your table or your desk. Then on the top there's this large white panel. This shows you the plus and the minus icons which we'll go over later. But a nice touch here is the buttons are actually colour matched to the fabric. The same applies to the orange and the yellow minis. Now this entire panel is actually a touch sensitive panel which I will show you once we get it set up in a minute. But there are no physical buttons on the mini. There's no power button or physical mute or volume buttons just this touch panel on the top. The mini is actually very small too, it's measuring only 3.3 inches tall and 3.9 inches wide, which means it will fit practically anywhere, it's just about the same size as an Amazon Echo Dot. Now setting up the HomePod mini is probably one of the easiest things you can do. You just need an iPhone and an iPad, then connect the USB cable to the plug and wait for it to power up. Then once it is powered on, simply place your iPhone near it and just wait for the prompt. From here it will ask you to set it up choosing which room you wish to add it to, and within about two minutes it's good to go. What can you do? I can do lots of things, like turn on the lights, give you a news update, and tell you about the weather. The next thing you need to do is decide where you wish to place it. For me, I think these are minimal and pretty aesthetically pleasing, so they will fit practically anywhere around the house. Obviously it's mains power, so it will need to be near a socket. I've only got two of these at the moment, but I would want one on my desk and probably one on my bedside unit. This would be useful for turning the lights on and off at night. If I added more, I would probably put one in the kitchen where I can have music playing. Saying that, I currently have a Google Max speaker, which is hard to beat in terms of sound quality and bass. But what about you? If you had or already have a smart speaker, where's the most likely place that you would use it? When it comes to using the Mini, it is absolutely packed with features. Most of these you would use on your phone anyway, but the fact you can use them hands-free is what's really useful. You don't even need to have your phone nearby to use them. Now the entire touch panel on the top is also backlit which is pretty cool and you'll see that when it's listening or responding to commands it lights up. But one of the best features about this is the fact you can airplay straight to it. This means whatever you're listening to or watching on your iPhone or your iPad you can send the audio straight to the speaker. You can either choose the speaker from the menu on your phone or, now this is a really cool feature, just tap your phone on it. So here I'm listening to the radio on my iPhone and just by tapping the speaker it will transfer the audio over. Now the same again if I wanted to cancel the music from the speaker and transfer it back to my phone, I just need to place my iPhone near the speaker and it will send the audio back. You can group multiple speakers together, so if you have two or three in different rooms around the house, the music you're listening to will be in perfect sync across all of your rooms. That's a pretty cool feature for parties or just creating a nice atmosphere as you're moving around the house. It has the usual smart speakers that you would expect like setting reminders, timers, checking the weather or asking Siri general questions like, could you please drop a like on this video? You can even use it to send and receive messages and phone calls. I actually dictated a message to my wife in iMessages which is the default app, but you can use it to send messages via WhatsApp too. You just need to say a command such as send a WhatsApp message to and it will do it for you. Now I don't know if anyone else picked up some air tags earlier this year when they launched, but you can also find them via Siri on the speaker too. So for me I've got five of these for different sets of keys, my bag and my bikes. It means if I lose them I can ask Siri where they are and it will ping them provided they are within range. Where are my car keys? Looking for Chris's keys. Apple Music is the best way to listen to music on the Mini as that's what it's integrated with. But what if you use Spotify like me? Well unfortunately Spotify is not natively integrated, so you cannot say play today's top hits on Spotify, but Spotify does work with the Mini. 
what you actually need to do is airplay it from the Spotify app instead. This does mean that you're using your iPhone, but at least you're able to use it. Google and Amazon, on the other hand, will they actually allow Spotify to work and can even be set as the default music app. If you've got an Apple TV 4K, you can actually ask the Mini to play a movie or show straight to the TV, just by using a simple command like play the morning show. It will then turn your Apple TV on and you're good to go. You can also even pair the HomePod Mini to an Apple TV. And if you've got two of these, you can create a stereo setup. This would make an awesome little soundbar type setup and plus they look pretty cool. Now the Mini can be used to control all of your smart home accessories or gadgets, anything that is HomeKit enabled. So for me, that's things like my lights, plugs, my heating, and even my alarm. Anything at all that integrates can be controlled with it. This is useful for walking into a room and turning all the lights on or off in one go. I actually did a smart home house tour a few months ago where I showed all of the tech that I'm using. Basically everything that includes the alarm and my lights can all be controlled via these minis. There's no need to use the apps or physical buttons to control them. Essentially, the more Apple or Apple compatible things that you have around the house, the better this little speaker will become. But the sound on the speaker is nothing short of incredible, especially for its size. I've had small speakers like the Google Mini and the Echo Dot, but this speaker is on a whole different level. They are priced at two to three times more expensive though, so there's that, but they do sound awesome. On their own, they sound great, but you can also pair them as a stereo setup. And when you do this and set them up properly as a left and right, they sound very impressive. Whether you're pairing them as part of your Apple TV setup or on your desk or just around the room, the sound genuinely impressed me. They create a truly immersive sound, something you'd normally get from bookshelf or surround sound speakers. Volume wise, they go up to an acceptable level, especially for the size. And when they do go up to that level, there's no distortion at all. The sound really is perfect. Even the bass on these little speakers are insanely good. They're not particularly loud though, so you're not gonna be able to crank them up to a level where you couldn't speak over them, but for the size, you can't really expect any more. And the 360 degree sound certainly fills the room. Plus that mess fabric I mentioned earlier, that does an awesome job of creating a pretty clean and unfiltered sound. But here's a demo to give you an idea of what they actually sound like. So overall, I think they sound awesome. They're very clear, the clarity is there. There's enough bass, especially considering the size. A few other features worth mentioning is Siri can recognize up to six different family members. This is great if you've got children or other family members around the house that you might want to use their own playlists, calendars, or reminders. And if you've ever wanted to broadcast a message to everyone in the house, you can do that too. It's called Intercom on here, which is very similar to Google's broadcast feature. Whatever message you share, it will send it to everyone, including your HomePods, watches, iPhones. Privacy is always a concern, as it should be. Unfortunately, nothing is stored or sold on these devices. Everything is used for analytic purposes only, and Apple have been very upfront about this. But it would be even better if there was a physical mute button on the device, somewhere where you can actually switch the microphone off if you were concerned about anyone listening in. So the HomePod Mini is £89 or $99, and I think it's really worth that price. The sound quality you're getting is on par with the larger speakers out there, but there's no distortion and it's very, very clear. On top of that, it looks nice. And if you're already in the Apple ecosystem with say an iPhone, an iPad and a MacBook, this fits well with those. I'm actually surprised at myself for having Google speakers around the house instead of these. Saying that, I did have Google speakers before HomeKit was kind of a big thing and where the HomeKit logos were showing up on product boxes. Generally speaking, Google and Alexa are more widely used and supported. But in short, if you're using Apple items already, definitely go for one of these HomePod Minis. And hopefully we'll see the larger HomePod Minis relaunched again next year. But which color would you go for? Let me know in the comments what speaker and color you would pick. Well, you've made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.